I think that even those who are far from the world of mixed martial arts know the name of Fedor Emelianenko. Ask anyone on the planet, and they'll say it's some kind of fighter. And MMA fans like you and me will say that this is not just a fighter, but a living mixed martial arts legend. With a high fighting IQ and a powerful knockout punch, Fedor was on a winning streak for almost 10 years, and at that time, was in the leading position on the pound-for-pound -pound list. This combatant combines cold-blooded calm outside the ring with explosive force inside it. Today, let us remember together the most vivid part of his career, which was held under the banner of the Japanese organization Pride, and where no one was able to win over him. Already at the age of 10, Fedor began to engage in combat sambo and judo. His coach was Vladimir Voronov, who later became his permanent coach for many years. Fedor continued to engage in martial arts after school at the vocational school, and in the army, he added a bar and added 20 kilograms of muscle. After the army, Emelianenko became a master of sports in Sambo and Judo. And a year later, he received the title of Master of Sports of International Class in Sambo. Two years later, Fedor was part of the Russian Sambo team and helped lead the team to the gold medal at the European Championships in Istanbul. But soon, due to several reasons, one of which was a lack of money, Emelianenko left the national team and decided to professionally pursue MMA. But he continued in the future to perform in Sambo and repeatedly became the champion of Russia and the world. Professional debut in mixed martial arts, Fedor held in the Japanese organization Rings, which organized the tournament in Russia. In this organization, he scored 10 victories and received his first but controversial defeat from Tsuyoshi Kosaka. The Japanese cut Fedor with the forbidden blow to the elbow and the doctors were forced to stop the fight. As the fight was part of the tournament, a winner was to be announced who could continue to the final. Emelianenko could not continue to participate in the tournament, so the winner of the fight was recognized as Kosaka. In this organization, Fedor twice won the heavyweight title. And it is noteworthy that the second time he became the champion in the absolute weight category in the last tournament of the organization, that is, the last champion. At the time, MMA's largest organization in the world was Pride. The agents of this Japanese organization invited the heavyweight champion after the termination of the organization rings. In the new organization, Emelianenko made his debut in June 2002 against Dutch kickboxer Sam Schilt. He received the nickname Hightower due to his height at 6 feet 11 inches. The tall Dutchman had already three fights in pride and won all by knockouts. The first round was started by Fedor with a takedown and tried from side control to develop the ground and pound. After an unsuccessful attempt to reach the armbar, the Russian fighter hit his kneecap in the head. After climbing full mount, Fedor inflicted several effective blows to the head. An unsuccessful Kimura attempt from Emelianenko and a few lashes from the bottom from the Dutchman. It is unclear how, but Schilt manages to apply a dissection over Fedor's eyebrow. Change of position for the fighters, but Fader manages to dominate the parterre until the end of the round. Both fighters are a little tired. The second round also begins with a swift takedown from Emelianenko. 
Sam closed the guard and with all his strength, stopped all the attacking attempts of the opponent. During the whole round of domination in the parterre, Fedor still dealt several significant blows. The third five minutes began with the Dutch front kick, but Emilianenko again went into the core and transferred the opponent to the canvas. From side control, the Russian put a few knees in the head and climbed into full mount. The series of three to four left hooks performed by Fedor was significant. For the rest of the round, Schilt lay on his back and defended himself against his opponent's ground and pound. By unanimous decision, Emelianenko won the match in the new organization, and Sam Schilt will be the first fighter in K1 history to win the championship three times in a row. A month later, Fader again entered the ring at the tournament Pride 23 against American Heath Herring. Famous for his extravagant hairstyles, he was nicknamed the Texas Crazy Horse. The American fighter before this had defeated two fighters in a row from the post-Soviet space and went behind the head of the third. After the gong, Herring launched an attack from a front kick, but Fedor grabbed a leg and took a takedown. There were several changes in the position of the fighters, but the Russian fighter was always on top. From the lateral control, he inflicted a powerful knee to the head, then turned on the accelerated ground and pound and hit several strong blows to the head of the American. He tried to escape the kicks, but gave up his back and picked up blows to the back of the head. From these powerful blows, the American received a strong cut under the eye, but the doctors allowed the fight to continue. Herring continued the fight with high kicks and middle kicks, but Fader once again turned the opponent to the canvas with a throw through the hip. And again ground and pound from the Russian in attempts to defend against the American. The cut increased and Heath's eye swam strongly. After a failed attempt to asphyxiate from behind, Emelianenko was found underneath. By the end of the round, Herring had been hit by several knees and hammer fists, but the blows were not accented. There would not be a second round, as the American fighter was prohibited from returning to the fight by the doctors. One eye completely closed due to a hematoma after the cut. Fedor Emelianenko won by technical knockout, and Heath Herring knocked out Japanese wrestler Yoshihiro Nakao a few years later for kissing him. The next bout was a title fight and was fought in March 2003 at Pride 25, Body Blow. The rival was the Brazilian star Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira, nicknamed Minotauro, who went on a series of 13 wins. He had been the Pride heavyweight champion since 2001 and had no intention of giving up that title that day. The round began with an unsuccessful leg pass from Nogueira. Then a powerful overhand and left uppercut hit Fedor and the fighters dropped in the parterre. The Brazilian closed the guard and blocked all attempts at the Russian ground and pound. Fedor had successfully accented attacks, but Minotauro withstood everything. Nogueira snapped at himself with up kicks and even tried to get out on the Kimura and then on a suffocating triangle with his legs, but unsuccessfully. At the end of the round, there were several explosive grounded pounds from Fedor, but the Brazilian endured everything. The second round began again with Antonio's attempt at a takedown, but Fedor met him with a knee in the hull and defended himself from a run to the legs.
Once on top, Emelianenko punched several significant hard blows to the head. And as soon as Nagura was able to make the whistle, he was on top, and the gong sounded. The third round began with a takedown from Fedor, and a failed attempt to get out from Nagura's elbow lever. Several accurate shots from Emelianenko to the head, and the opponent was totally dominated on the parterre until the end of the round. Fedor won by unanimous decision and won the organization's heavyweight title. It was clear to all fans that these fighters would meet again in revenge. In June of the same year, at the next tournament, Pride, against the new champion came a local fighter, Kazuyuki Fujita, nicknamed Ole Ironhead. In this fight, he will do something that no one has ever done before. Let's just remember together what that was. After a brief reconnaissance, the first to attack was Emelianenko with a combination of hooks to the hull. After Fader's unsuccessful attempt at a takedown, the fighters continued at the bar. Fader teased the Japanese fighter with circular movements, and then he was hit with a hard overhand. Then he added a soccer kick, and Kazuyuki took a leg, but could not bring the Russian on the floor of the ring. Fedor attacked with a combination of hooks, but all Ironhead caught the opponent with a right hook to me. Emelianenko was shocked. His legs collapsed, but he made the right decision and clashed in the blade with the Japanese fighter, blocking his blows. Vegeta had a takedown and ended up in Fedor's guard. Meanwhile, the Russian fighter recovered, and did not let the Japanese fighter do anything on the parterre. The fight continued at the counter, and Emelianenko attacked with the right overhand, then immediately accented a middle kick and precise hooks in Kazuyuki's jaw. The Japanese fighter fell, and Fader took his back and strangled the opponent from behind. At the last minute of the first round, Vegeta surrendered. He lost but was forever remembered as a fan for sending Emelianenko to the nail down. Two months later, Fedor Emelianenko again went into the ring against Canadian fighter Gary Goodridge. The Canadian was nicknamed Big Daddy, and in the last nine fights lost only once, and confidently came up against the champion. Immediately at the first seconds of the fight, Fedor hit the left hook powerfully, then another one of the same, and immediately he launched an explosive attack of hooks to the head with two hands. Milianenko did not stop. The hooks changed their uppercuts to the head in the hull, then a hard right hook to Goodridge's jaw. Knee to the hull and takedown from Fedor. The powerful grounded pound with soccer kicks of the Russian man put the end to this fight. In the first seconds of the second minute, the referee stopped this beating. Goodridge will make a good streak after this fight, losing only once in the next seven. But then there will be a bad streak of seven straight defeats, after which he would retire. To support Alexander's brother, Fedor decided to participate in the 2003 New Year's Inoki Bornbayi tournament in Japan where he battled local fighter Yuji Nagata. Alexander fought a little earlier and won by knockout. That was only the second fight in his professional career. Fader's rival was a four-time world wrestling champion, but in the MMA, only had one match against Mirko Krokop and lost by knockout. An interesting fact is that the ring announcement at the tournament was the famous Bruce Buffer, who announced the fighters in his signature style. <laughs> After the gong, Nagata immediately tried to fight but fell on Fader's uppercuts. 
Two exact combinations of hooks shook the Japanese fighter. Yuji punched a low kick, but Fedor caught his foot and sent the Japanese fighter to the ring deck with his right cross. Nagata jumped up and took on another powerful middle kick from the Russian. Then the left hook cut down the Japanese fighter, and Emelianenko killed soccer kicks and blows. This was Nagata's second career loss and his last, as he did not perform again. He must have been unlucky that the first two opponents of his MMA career were such powerful fighters. On April 25, 2004, the Grand Prix of the Pride Heavyweight Organization started. Emelianenko's first rival was the American Mark Coleman, nicknamed Hammer. He was the first UFC heavyweight champion, and in the last eight fights, he lost only once. And that was to Antonio Nogueira. Mark started the round with a jab, and Fedor responded with a series of huge hooks but missed. Good friend. After the successful takedown, Coleman took his back and prepared for the chokehold from behind. He tucked his legs in, but his hands could not. Emelianenko made a sweep and went out on a standing guillotine, but Mark got free. The Russian fired on his rival with a series of hooks and hit his head with a knee. The American fighter caught a leg and held a takedown. From the guard, Emelianenko's lightning captures the hand, throws his legs behind Mark's head and conducts an armbar. Hammer immediately tapped. How technical and beautiful it was. Two months later, in the quarterfinals of the Grand Prix, Fedor joined American wrestler Kevin Randleman. Randleman, known as The Monster, had knocked out from the Grand Prix Mirko Krokop himself and was ready to do the same with Emelianenko. And he almost did. Randleman walked into the hall and pulled a takedown. Fedor took a whistle and got up, and the American took a hold of the hull and held a powerful suplex. What a shot it was. How did Emelianenko survive, and how did his neck not break? But Fedor did not seem to get lost. He makes the whistle and is out of side control first. He puts a short punch to the head, and then he goes out into the Kimura. The monster surrendered in the second minute of the first round. But this cool slam by Kevin Randleman is forever a highlight of MMA. In the semifinals of the Grand Prix, Emelianenko faced Japanese fighter Naoya Ogawa. The silver Olympic medalist and multiple world champion in judo was an undefeated fighter, and his record was 7-0. Let's see if he stays undefeated against Fedor, or if Fedor would punish him for not greeting him before the fight. The Japanese fighter was the first to start the fight with left crosses, and Fedor launched an explosive attack with huge hooks, several of which flew into the target. Then the Russian landed a takedown and immediately sat down in full mount. Shortly thereafter, Fedor conducts a painful armbar, and the Japanese fighter taps. Within a minute, Ogawa had suffered his first defeat, and Emelianenko had taught him a lesson for the disrespect. The Japanese fighter had one other fight, where he lost again and ended his career in MMA. In the final of the Grand Prix, Fedor rematched with Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. Since squaring off last time, Minotaro had won five victories and came for revenge with great confidence. After the gong, Antonio immediately decided to go into the core, but Fedor defended himself from the pass and was on top of the Brazilian. Antonio tried to get out a couple times and on the painful heel hook and knitted his opponent's hands blocking Fader's ground and pound, just a few seconds on the target, and in another fight for dominance on the parterre, the fighters collide their heads, and Emelianenko gets a very strong cut. That's what it is. That's what it is. The doctors took long to make a decision, but ultimately did not allow Fader to continue, and the fight was abandoned. Their third fight was scheduled for the last day of 2004. For some, he was a great disappointment, and for some, he won the Grand Prix and the Heavyweight Championship. Fedor starts the round beautifully, with the right low kick, left hook, and a takedown. The fighters rose to the bar after several attempts by the Russian 
to trample the face of the Brazilian. Fedor again held a successful takedown and hit a powerful soccer kick in the head. Then again from the stance, where Emelianenko was slightly more successful. First, Minotaro took a leg and met him with a right cross, and later Fedor returned with the same cross, and the Brazilian was knocked down. Later again, a powerful hit with the right cross from the Russian fighter, and a little later another. Emelianenko worked first and hit more. The round ended with a takedown from Nogueira. In the second round, after a small change of blows, where the Russian was again successful, Antonio took a takedown, but found himself on the bottom. The fight went from one rack to the other, but nothing dangerous happened. Fedor was well protected from the takedowns and was more successful in the exchange of blows. The third round went according to the same scenario as the previous one. There was a cool knee to the head of the Brazilian from the side control. More significant blows and domination on the parterre from Emelianenko. The fighters are already quite tired, but Fedor's timing was better. Nogueiro became more active at the end of the round and hit more, but this was not enough to win. Fedor Emelianenko won by unanimous decision, putting a certain point in the confrontation with Antonio Nogueira. New Year's gifts for the Russian fighter became a fat check, the unification of the title in absolute weight of the most prestigious organization in MMA, and the addition of a huge number of fans around the world. In April 2005, Fedor had the opportunity to repay a debt that was owed by the first one to defeat him. At the beginning of the video, we remembered the forbidden elbow of Tsuyoshi Kosaka, which brought the only defeat of Emelianenko. They competed at Pride Bushido 6. The Japanese fighter was on a series of three consecutive victories and was eager to prove in revenge that the victory in the first fight was not accidental. The round began with a foot-to-foot -foot pass from the Japanese fighter, but Fedor was technically defensive and was on top. He crashed an explosive ground and pound and hit the head a few times hard and seasoned it all with a powerful kick from the bottom. Kusaka survived but was cut and his eye swam very hard. The doctor allowed the fight to continue and Kusaka again tried to take the takedown, but Emelianenko abandoned him and almost hit a hard soccer kick. Tsuyoshi snapped at the up kicks, and Fedor landed on him with heavy blows and smashed the Japanese defender with hammer fists. The Russian climbed up the guard to the opponent and dominated the parterre, developing his grounded pound. The referee raised the fighter to the bar, and Kasaka hit the right hook, but Fedor immediately took a takedown and again conducted an explosive series of blows to the head. The referee again lifted up the athletes in a stance, and the Japanese fighter missed this forceful jab, from which he was led and walked into the legs, but Emelianenko made a grip on the guillotine. Tsuyoshi broke out. Until the end of the round, Fedor dominated the parterre. The Japanese fighter did not make it to the second round. Because of closed eyes, the fight was stopped by doctors, and Emelianenko was awarded the victory by a technical knockout. Emelianenko did justice and proved that his only defeat was on paper. Almost five months later, Fedor Emelianenko again went into the ring of pride and his rival became an offender of his brother Alexander. It was a Croatian fighter named Mirko Filipovic, aka Krokop. His main chip was the powerful head kick, which he used to send a deaf knockout of more than one opponent, including Fedor's brother. Between these fighters, there was real tension. Fedor wanted to avenge his brother, and in addition, the organization's heavyweight championship was at stake. Krokop won the title fight by winning the last seven matches against ranked fighters. 
Emelianenko immediately took the center of the ring and worked in the first number. Mirko was hit by a powerful middle kick on Fedor's arm, and he counterattacked with a precise but not as strong left hook. The Russian was more successful at hand-to-hand -hand exchanges, and he was able to dodge the Croats' first ever head kick. The fighters exchanged hard accented blows. Mirko threw a short double left cross, but it didn't seem as strong, although Fader's legs seemed to give for a second. Krokop ran to finish off and even casually hit his high kick on the head of Fedor, but the Russian defended himself and transferred the Crow to the floor of the ring. By the end of the round, Emelianenko dominated the parterre and dodged perhaps hundreds of Croats up kicks. A very dynamic and exciting round shown by both fighters. This should always be the title fight. The second round began with an explosive attack by a Russian, and then a high kick to the head. Krokop did not quite expect this rush from the Russian fighter in the counter, and was unprepared that he would constantly fight. An exchange of blows with the hands precisely from Fedor, and then he held a takedown and until the end of the round dominated from the parterre. At the beginning of the third round were hard hits and uppercuts, hooks from Fedor. And it was seen that Krokop was more tired than his opponent. On the parterre, Emelianenko again showed his ground and pound, but it was not easy to break through the Croats' defense. Fedor defeats Mirko Krokop by unanimous decision of the judges avenges his brother and defends the title of heavyweight champion. One major authoritative publication called the match a battle of the decade. On the last day of 2005, Fedor again wore gloves to fight a giant Brazilian fighter named Zulu Zeno. The Brazilian stood at six foot seven and weighed 390 pounds. He fought six fights in the MMA and was an undefeated fighter. His appearance would have terrified any rival, but not Emelianenko. The Russian in the first seconds dropped the Brazilian on the deck, a left hook, and includes at most his grounded pound of hammer fists and soccer kicks. Zuluzino rises and immediately falls from a powerful right hook. Fedor kills a few more hammer fists and the Brazilian tapped back. In 26 seconds, Zuluzino was no longer undefeated. Mark Coleman wanted a rematch with Fedor after the defeat, and he received it in October 2006. Fedor had surgery on his arm and did not perform for almost a year. Mark won two victories in the last two battles. At the beginning of the first round, Coleman tried to walk in the legs, but Fedor technically defended himself and brought down a series of hard hooks on the American hammer. Emelianenko tried to make a standing guillotine, and Mark Long tried to drag the Russian into the parterre. On the way out of the clinch, Fedor hit a powerful uppercut. American tried to get through the legs and again missed a powerful left uppercut and right hook. Coleman was shocked and escaped the blows of Emelianenko, falling to his feet and trying to drag him into the parterre. The American received a cut, but the doctors allowed the fight to continue. In the second round, Coleman still had a takedown, but it was probably his mistake. Emelianenko put his foot behind his head, making a grip, and goes out in the armbar. In the second minute, Mark gives up. It is necessary to pay tribute to the American veteran, who at 42 years old, went into the ring against the strongest heavyweight of the time. On New Year's Eve 2007, Emelianenko had to defend his title of pride in a fight against American Josh Burnett, but he refused the fight saying that he did not have time to prepare. 
New Zealander Mark Hunt was named the Super Samoan. He also defeated Mirko Krokop and in the last six fights lost only once to Josh Barnett. After the gong, Hunt took the center of the ring and snagged Fader's left hook in the jump. The Russian took a takedown and immediately sat in a full mount. After Hunt narrowly freed himself from the armbar, the New Zealander dominated the right control from the parterre for some time and even tried to administer several painful doses to the American. The fighters briefly rose to the bar until Emelianenko held a successful takedown and went into the Kimura. In the ninth minute, Mark Hunt tapped in surrender. During the fight, Fedor broke his toe, but this did not prevent him from winning. This battle was the last for Emelianenko under the auspices of the Japanese promotion Pride, as a few months later the organization went bankrupt. The era of the most powerful MMA organization on the planet had ended, and Fedor again became the last champion in the absolute category, as it once was for the organization rings. That's why he got his nickname, The Last Emperor. He is rightly considered one of the best fighters in the history of mixed martial arts. If you watch this video without a subscription, be sure to subscribe to the channel right now, press the like button, and tap the bell icon to avoid missing our next video. Take care.